What's up guys, JST Sense here, and I'm gonna bring you a video about probably the single-handed most wasteful purchases I've made. I say purchases, it was one goal that I wasted a lot of money on. And today's video is gonna to be to hopefully keep anyone from following my mistakes. And if you hear some jingling like metal, it's because I've got the dogs in here. And then speaking of which, um, Siberians like, my Siberian likes to lay underneath table legs and stuff. She seems to think the tripod is a table. So she is all like wrapped around it and she's literally touching the leg with her nose. So if you see the camera wiggle or just fall over, then you'll know why. I see you trying to get closer over here, knucklehead. Today's video is sponsored by Audible and right now is probably a better time than ever to use some of that extra free time you probably have on your hands to get lost in a nice story, giving you a, a, an awesome distraction from everything going on. You can literally lay back in your couch and listen to your favorite stories or books read to you while you literally just sit there and relax. Now, the cool thing about Audible and their audiobooks is not only do they have thousands and thousands to choose from, from a bunch of different genres, but you can listen to it on one device and pick up on another exactly where you left off, meaning you never have to do a digital fold of a corner trying to remember which page you left on, it will remember for you. Now, a couple months ago, I was listening to Darth Pelagus, but right now I think it's one of those times I might start checking out that self-help section once again. But the cool thing about Audible is the fact that their audiobooks span across every single genre that you would find in traditional written paper and leather bound books. So start listening today by getting a 30 day free trial as well as one audiobook and two Audible originals absolutely free. You can find the link in the description below. It's audible.com slash jays 2 cents That's J-A-Y-Z-T-W-O-C-E-N-T-S. Or just text jays 2 cents to 500-500 on your smart device. All right, dog people like to see the dogs. Let's go. Come here, Zuri. There she is. There's my dog. Oh, I'm gonna be so covered in fur now. Yes. All right. Well, here we go. Today's video is about this microphone setup behind me and what I went through to put it I love you too. <laughs> okay, oh, I'm so covered in fur. So today's video is all about this Shure SM7B uh, dynamic microphone that I bought for this setup so I could do live streaming because I want to get back into that. And since I have a space that's like worthy of live streaming in and, and didn't become a catch all. I, I wanted to get back into interacting with my audience live, playing some games. I've been doing the live stream of the model builds and stuff. And the reason why I got the Shure SM7B is one, it has very legendary sound. It's a design that hasn't changed much since the 70s, which is why it's a dynamic microphone, which means it's not powered. It doesn't require 48 volts. Starts my first problem right there. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a microphone that was kind of like the mic all the big YouTubers had when I started my channel. And back then having a million subscribers was like, would get you in like the top 15 list in the world if you had a million. But I digress, it, it was a microphone that was almost like a status symbol. And then when I went to first set up my YouTube channel, I bought a Yeti mic, which is a USB mic. But I was like, I want that Shure SM7B. Someday I'm gonna get that microphone. And I got it. And then I hooked it up. And I was like, well, it's XLR. So I need some sort of an interface. Now, rather than going with a cheap uh, mixer slash DAC type of interface like the Alesis Multi-Mix that I've used for literally seven years leading up to this point, um, I was like, you know what? I'll just go with the Focusrite Scarlet. Everyone talks about how good the Scarlet is. So I took my Shure SM7B, this guy right here, and I hooked it up to my Scarlet Solo. Now the Scarlet Solo is to microphones as to basically what like a Mayflower type DAC would be to headphones. It's a way to take a signal and then convert it to digital and get it into the computer. DAC, digital analog converter. So we have an XLR input, which is what this is. It has 48 volt phantom power if I need it. But remember, this is a dynamic microphone. Turning phantom power on and off does nothing. In fact, turning phantom power on on certain dynamic mics could actually damage it. So yeah, that anyway. But because this is not a condenser microphone, which means it's not powered, it means you might be dealing with low signal input, which is exactly what I dealt with with the Scarlet. The Scarlet, with the gain cranked as high as it would freaking go, lifted the noise floor a little bit, which is that hiss or that hum. If there's no noise and you just have a recording and you hear that kind of a th that's noise floor. Um, you deal with it with headphones, just like you deal with it with microphones. And so what I found was cranking that all the way up did two things. One, it didn't do this microphone any justice. The microphone 
It needs to be uplifted, which means it needs something between it and the analog converter or digital analog converter that would give it more brightness, more tone and more oomph, if you will. And so that's when I then had to buy another piece of equipment and you can't see it because it's actually wired in underneath the table. And I use what's called a cloud lift uplifter. And basically what that is, is that's a 48 volt phantom powered device that goes in line between the microphone and well, in my case, this guy, which takes the signal and boosts it to where this preamp then can take it and boost it more if you need. That gave me a lot of the volume that I needed. In fact, it sounded so bad just like this, the first time you guys heard it, which is when I was doing a video about the uh, G19, uh, the G19, the G915, I don't know what I'm talking about here, the G915 keyboard, and I was showing some on-screen capture and I was like, I'm on my shirt. And everyone was like, wow, that sounds terrible. And so if you're looking at this from a streaming standpoint of is this keyboard gonna annoy my viewers? Well, that's what it sounded like until I got the signal uplifted. Now from there, I noticed something else. It did not have the warm tone that I really wanted. One of the things that makes this microphone so legendary is it's buttery, smooth, and warm tone. It has, this, this microphone probably exists in more radio uh, studios than any other microphone. Sure, Rode or Red, however you wanna pronounce it, um, and like the Podcaster and the Procaster are very popular microphones as well, and they're much, much newer. But this design, as I said, hasn't really changed since the 70s, and you will find this microphone in just about every pro studio, XM radio, AM radio, FM radio, and you'll get what has that really kind of a, I don't wanna call it edgy, but it's definitely got a, a sound to it that I was looking for. And this didn't have that. And I went, well, wait a minute. It's taking the raw input, which is nothing more than a, a non-powered diaphragm in there, which vibrates with sound and turns it into a, a, a signal, an analog signal in this case, that is then turned digital in my Scarlet and then sent over to the computer. There's no EQ whatsoever. Now, when it comes to an EQ, there are digital EQs that you can download. In fact, I'm running one right now in OBS, and I'll show you guys what that is when I switch over to the screen here. But what that allowed me to do was con uh, control the tone in OBS and actually have a digital EQ that would then take the USB signal and kind of EQ it. But it only worked in OBS. It didn't work in my Skype calls. It doesn't work in Discord. It doesn't work in any other microphone capture software that was gonna be using this guy. So then I was like, okay, I need an EQ. And that's when I then started shopping around and I went with the Yamaha MG06. This is a purely analog EQ slash mixer. Uh, it's technically got two inputs and I could input like an instrument, a guitar, uh, anything that's got any sort of a quarter inch or an XLR output or input, whatever, could go into this. So I could mix other audio into it if I wanted, but that's not what uh, I got this for. I got this simply so I could have some tone control in terms of the bass and the treble, which really made it sound better. So what I've got now is the Shure SM7B. Between that and the MG06 is the Cloudlift Uplifter. Between there, it then connects into the Scarlett. From Scarlett, it connects to my PC via USB-C. Uh, there are obviously mixers that you can get that have their own digital interface built in and USB output, just like the Elisa's Multimix that uh, I've put like in my previous builds where it's just mic into this, plenty of preamp power to handle things like the dynamic microphone and then send it off to the computer with one thing. So Jay, why didn't you just get that? Well, because I'm stubborn. I'd already bought the Solo and I couldn't return it. It was past the return policy on Amazon. I had already bought the Cloudlift uplifter. Well, if I can't return this, what's the point of returning the uplifter? I then doubled down and went with the mixer and got myself the sound that I wanted but at what cost? It was $4.99 for the microphone. This MG06 was about 100 bucks. The Scarlet Solo was about 120. The Cloudlift Uplifter was also about another 100. So that's 500, 600, 700, 800, and $20. All right, so I flipped around to my live streaming setup and as you can see, my, my dog, he's back there. The one that looks like Scrappy-Doo. Yeah, and then where's, where's Zuri? There she is. Remember I told you she likes to lay underneath the tripods and stuff? That's why I was a little worried. Anyway, <clears throat> let's get back on topic here. Dogs are quite the distraction. So what I've got right here are two setups. My $820-ish dollar setup for my SM7B. And then I've got the, what well, you can get for about 100 bucks now, the Blue Yeti, the classic, I think is what they're calling it now. 
with just a basic USB interface into the front of my computer being captured through Audacity. And then it's all gonna obviously be synced. So what it is I want you to kind of listen for right now are just how are they handling the midtones? How are they handling the um, like the highs and stuff like that? And it is important to remember that my Yamaha right now, my MG06 is adding an EQ to this microphone. Um, if I take that EQ out, that's what it actually sounds like. So I'm gonna put it back to how I would normally have it simply because of the fact that that's why I bought it. So if I take the EQ out of the equation, there's no point of including it in the cost, but whatever. It's about the total setup I did versus what you could have got. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and say, how now brown cow? And then while I'm talking about whatever, I guess Phil could kind of switch back and forth between the Yeti and the SM7B. Now what you're gonna notice with the Yeti out of the box is anything with a, with a P, Blasts of air are going to definitely affect it. The windscreen built into it aren't that great, isn't that great, but there are pop filters and stuff obviously that you could get. The SM7B, however, p -p 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 handles it p -p 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 just fine because it's got several windscreens built into it. But I mean, for the cost difference, you get this, you get a pop filter, and at the end of the day, you're ready to go. In fact, Blue even makes a pop filter specifically for this microphone. So I think what I've kind of demonstrated here by talking long enough is just Sure, there is a sound difference between both of them. And, and which, what the sound you, profile you're looking for is gonna definitely be dependent on your personal taste. However, I think most people would agree taking something like the SM7B or the Yeti and then applying the filter to it like I already, it, so it's a VST filter and it's by a company called Vox Angle Marvel. And it's really simple, it installs and then all you do is go into OBS and then you just simply tell it like, uh, you click on the microphone settings and then properties and then filter and then add a VST and then you get the little slider that shows up and this is what it looks like. And then you can go in there and EQ it and have even more points of EQ than even just using my the basic Yamaha. So I'll be using the VST for live streaming as well as the Yamaha to kind of fine tune a little bit. But I wanted to kind of get most of the sound that I wanted out of it kind of up front. But as you can see, it makes much more sense to go with a nice mic like this, a nice USB mic or even an XLR mic with a like some sort of a, an interface um, that there's a lot of cheap options out there. I don't know of many off the top of my head right now, but there are sources out there. But I would go with some sort of an inexpensive mic like this and then get your capture card and get your camera or whatever that you want to, to make your live streaming setup that much better. And don't waste the money like I did because I think Phil switching back and forth like he was, it's pretty obvious that this is not... Uh, cost effective in any way. Now sure, many of you might be saying, but I kind of like the warmer sound of the Shure versus the Yeti, which has a, a lot of highs and doesn't have a lot of low end. Well, what you're hearing me talk on obviously right now is the Yeti with that same VST Voxel, Voxango Marvel filter added to it. So as you could see by adding a digital EQ to the USB input in OBS, if that's the only thing you care about having this audio quality on, then as you can see, you can get pretty dang close to the quality of the SM7B, if not make it indistinguishable from anyone listening on your live stream. Again, making my purchase completely nullified. And it's free, by the way. This Vox Angle thing, it's free. I'll try and put a link in the description below, but if I forget, it's Vox Ango Marvel VST filter. So for an approximate $820 for my Shure SMB setup, versus what you can get now for under $100 in many instances, the Blue Yeti. And this is the old one, this is the old school one. They have so many new versions of this now. Do you really think that's worth eight times the amount of money that something like this is worth? Now here's the thing, you could still go XLR. In fact, a lot of people are very pro XLR over USB for obvious reasons. You can put a mixer in line and adjust the tones and not have to do it digitally. Um, but you can get mixers for 50 bucks, like I showed. The Alesis Multi-Mix is still running strong at my other studio. In fact, I had the AT2020, was it AT2020 or AT2043? I think it's the one above the 2020, I think it was 2050 maybe, doesn't matter. That was also a $150 microphone with the $50 interface for $200. That sounds just as good, if not better than this. What you can get with decent USB microphones these days is significantly cheaper, obviously, than trying to go this route. Now, yeah, you could buy cheaper XLR microphones. Like the Rode Podcaster um, was about $250, I think it was. Oh, and that doesn't include the arm. The arm was uh, approximately 80 bucks on its own because I went with the, the good Rode one. 
but you can get those for like 20 bucks. I didn't include that in the cost because you would still probably need that with regardless of the microphone. So I'm not including that as a waste of money. But I think at the end of the day, you have to agree. I really screwed up on the amount of money that I spent on this. And considering I was having this conversation in chat um, the other day with um, Harris, who's a live streamer, and we got past all the drama that was happening there, but I was chatting with him and he does a lot of setup videos regarding um, ways that you can save money in terms of getting great sound without breaking the bank. Yeah, this uh, really made me feel bad <laughs> because it was such a ridiculous waste of money. So take this video for what it is, um, a PSA to not do what I did. And I had people ask me about this setup. Jay, that microphone, Jay, that, that red thing on your desk, what is it? Can I get it? How much is it? A lot of people, unfortunately, will buy something just because they see someone like myself or a big YouTuber or whatever using it and they don't know anything about it. They just want it because Linus has it or Jay has it or whatever, whoever has it, so I want it. It's not the right way to shop. And take this, like I said, as a warning. If, this, if all of this were returnable, I would probably do it and then just start over. But we're so far past all of that. Some of this stuff I bought at brick and mortar stores that are closed and I can't even go to to return right now. So I'm just eating it, it works. It's a waste of money, but it's here. It is what it is. I kind of got caught up in the whole like, I'm gonna build the ultimate nerd cave and I'm gonna buy all the nerdy stuff. And then what it did, as you can see, is just completely wreck the bank. You could have bought a webcam, a really good webcam, or you could have bought an inexpensive like handy cam with an HDMI output and then still had the money to buy like a capture card. This is the Elgato HD60 Pro. They have a 4K Pro now. This is the PCIe card that captures HDMI. So it has zero lag and I'm actually brought this so I could hook it up and do what I'm about to, about to say. You could get off the webcam, get an inexpensive cam with an HDMI output, get the capture card, get the microphone, get the stand, get the cable and have money left over. A significant amount of money left over. Maybe even enough to buy like a graphics card. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I had to put this video out there because the amount of people that were asking me about this setup and I have to tell you, don't buy this setup. Don't, unless you already have like an EQ or something and you just really want this microphone, totally not necessary because we're still dealing with online compression of like YouTube and Twitch and all that stuff, which is gonna downsample the bitrate anyway on the audio. Thanks for watching guys. And if you have any suggestions on those that are doing beginners or beginners that are setting up live streams or cap captures, and you've got a microphone set up that you highly recommend that is not gonna break the bank, put it in the comments below. I love when my community helps each other. I'm just one person and there are a lot of people out there with a lot of experiences and you can probably help someone. Thanks for watching guys and as always, I will see you in the next one.